Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the this keyword in C++. And this is something that beginners often find very confusing, but as we'll see, it, it's not that confusing, really. Um, although you won't understand uh, everything about it until you understand pointers, which we'll get onto in a later tutorial. But this tutorial will give us actually our first glimpse of a pointer. So um, for this tutorial I've created this person class and I've just given it a string name and an int age. Uh, we've got a default constructor that I've, I've created here which uh, doesn't do anything at the moment. And I've also given it a two string method that just outputs, it just returns as a string some information about the class. So uh, let, let's actually add to, the, um, to this constructor here, the constructor that takes no parameters, which is all we've got here at the moment. Let's add to this some initialization of age, which I'll set to naught, and name, which I'll set to an empty string. Now, um, in my main function, I've declared an object of this class, and I can use see out with by calling to string just to output the information that to string returns. There's nothing standard in C++ about this to string method. It's just what I've chosen to implement. And it says name is well, it's blank here and age is zero for this object. So uh, let's let's create a parameterized constructor, a constructor that takes parameters or arguments you can call them. Let's go to person.h and declare a new constructor, person, and this time I'm going to say string name, and, uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, let's call it name to start with, let's say string name and int age. And now I'm going to copy this prototype and save that, and I'll go to person.cpp and we'll define, we'll implement that constructor. So person, colon, colon, that's the class name. And here's the implementation of the constructor. Now we've got a problem here because um, I'm passing in arguments as name and age. And uh, in person.h, the actual variables that we want to set are already called name and age. So the question is, how can we differentiate these variables, which are in scope here between these brackets, from the uh, instance variables up here, which are also in scope? Uh, because they exist for any method that belongs to the class. How can we differentiate the two names and the two ages here? Let's first of all write some code that actually uses this before we implement it. So I could say here person, person one. Well, actually, let's make this person one. I'll make this person two. And we'll, we'll supply a name, Bob, and an age, 42. And then we can do a C out on person two as well. So that constructor doesn't do anything at the moment, so we won't see anything new here, but the program should run. And again, with a bit of luck, not seeing anything, there we go. Um, we've got age 17. Why, why is that? That's because uh, if we look at this, I've called this constructor here, but that constructor doesn't set values for age and name, so we've just got garbage in them at the moment. Now, to actually refer to the name that's a part of the class, and so will be part of the individual objects, we can do this. We can type this arrow. So it's a hyphen and a right angle bracket to form an arrow. And uh, autocomplete is helping me here. Let's say name equals name. So here, if I refer to name without any kind of qualification, without anything at the beginning of it, it's going to assume that I mean the local parameter name here. It's going to assume that I mean the name which is most closely defined. That's what we get if we just refer to name without anything before it. If I put this arrow before name, then uh, C++ will know that I mean this name up here. So we can set this name, so this arrow name, equal to name, which is this one here. And that's, that achieves the same as if I called this like, you know, new name or something like that. And I'd written uh, name equals new name. So 
this is the same as that. But let's get rid of that and move this back to name. And we can do the same for age. This arrow age equals age. And this is a very, very common and very useful way to define a constructor. It, uh, it alleviates the need for you to think up new names for these variables, which are, after all are exactly the same. They have the same purpose ultimately as these. They're meant to correspond to these. They're just used for setting these values. So um, normally you get into the habit of creating constructors um, and also set methods that are very useful there. You can use this in set methods and you just say this, this arrow name equals name, this arrow age equals age and so on. Let's just see that working. So I'll just run this and we've got here name Bob age 42. That's coming from this object here where we're invoking the constructor that we just used. Now what actually is this? Well, <laughs> what actually is this? Well, as I said um, earlier, you won't fully understand it until you understand pointers. But let's just investigate it a tiny little bit here. What this is, is um, it's a variable that contains uh, the memory location of each individual object that you create. So um, we, we call it a pointer. This is a, a pointer variable. And we can actually output the value of that. Let's try that. Let's do C out this endler. See what we get. And um, let's run that. So uh, the constructor runs back, back here when I create the object. And you can see it, it's outputting this here. It's outputting this stuff. Let's change that a bit so we can say um, memory memory location of object. That should do the trick. And if I run this, so it says memory location of object OX and this long string. Uh, so what this is, is um, 0x is a prefix on a number, means it's going to be specified in hexadecimal. So we know decimal. Decimal is a, a number system where you have nine digits from zero to nine. In each possible in each possible position, there are nine. What you have one of nine possible digits that you can use. We've seen binary, where you have one of two possible digits in each position, either zero or one. This is hexadecimal, where there are there are sixteen digits to choose from that you can use in each position. And and because we've only got zero to nine uh, in our normal number system, we add the extra digits, a, b, c, d, e, and f into hexadecimal and that's why there are f's in here but you can use um, like google or something quite easily to convert this to a um, to a decimal number if you want to but it is just a number and the, the x is yeah it's just telling you that this is in hexadecimal not decimal or something uh, so it's just a number and it specifies the actual location in, in a computer's memory the whole memory is numbered somehow and uh, this is specifying where that object, what bit of memory was actually allocated to put the, this object in, because clearly we need some memory for it to store, for example, the, um, the values of variables. So when we create this person object here, at that point, memory is allocated in a computer's memory at this particular position. And that's what is stored in this, in this, this variable. We could have put this probably in um, in an int, I suppose. Why not? Um, but uh, it's it is a special variable called this. But it, at the end of the day, it's it sort of just stores a number. But it also knows that this is a memory address and not simply any number. Uh, we can we can actually see that. Um, so so here, when a particular object is created, it's gonna output its location. Let's let's create a new object actually. Let's create a new one here and say su 35 or something, 25 doesn't matter. Let's run this. Of course we'll get that new object that we've instantiated. Done something wrong there. What did I do? Um, let's take a look. Redefinition. Oh yeah, I've called it person two again. Okay, let's have person three. Let's run that. So the, the next object will, of course, be stored in a different memory location. So they're, they're, they're close to each other, 
maybe even next to each other, but this, is, uh, this ends in 98, this ends in 50 there. So we, we could find the locations of these objects in memory here in the main program if we wanted to. And um, to do that, let's say person 1.2 string, and let's say some punctuation, um, memory, memory location. And to get the actual memory location of a person or any object in C++, you just preface it with a, um, an ampersand like that. So let's say person ampersand person one. And uh, well, I, I read that um, often as at person one. Well, it's not actually an at sign, but that's <laughs> often how I read it. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, yeah, it's probably better to say address person one because it's the memory address of person one. Let's do that for person two as well. So let's just copy all this and paste that in person two. Actually, it would be more interesting to do person two and person three because there were running constructors that um, that actually have that this statement in it that we're outputting this. So let's do that. So we'll look at person two and person three. And for those two objects, we're running the constructors that actually output the value of this. So let's, let's run this. And what we find is that so we've got memory location of object that's coming from here, the actual constructor. And we've got one that says it ends in 98. And we see here from our main function that the address of it was actually person two is 98. So when we created person two, the, the constructor ran for that object. And at that time, when this constructor ran for that particular object, and that object resided in this memory location. And that's why this output that particular memory location. When we created person two, sorry, person three here, the constructor ran again. And when it ran again, this had a different value, it had a different memory location. Because of course, person three is not in the same location as person two. So then we output this, this stuff here. And then we output the locations of those two objects, which of course we already know because we output it using this, but we can see the two locations again down here. They're the same two locations as these. Um, now I just, I, I wanted to run through this just because it'll kind of uh, sort of soften the blow a bit when you encounter um, pointers later on. We're going to look at all of this later on. We're going to be looking at the, um, this ampersand thing and memory addresses and stuff like that a bit more later on, as well as more stuff besides. But um, the, the thing that I'd recommend practicing for this tutorial is very simply create some classes and um, give them constructors and also try giving them set methods and give the constructors and set methods um, parameters that you've got defined in your, for your particular object. But then instead of giving them different names, in, in your actual parameters to your set methods or, or your constructors. Give them the same names as the values that um, they're used to assign to, and then use this to differentiate the two. So just practice doing what I've done here, basically, in a set method and in a constructor. Try typing stuff like this arrow name equals name, and that will help. Although it's a small thing, it'll help fix it in your memory, and it will also help a lot later on when you encounter pointers, just, just to already have some familiarity working with this arrow notation. And as for the rest, if the stuff about memory locations went a bit over your head, then don't worry about it because we're gonna revisit this later on, but it's good to um, already be acquainted with it at this stage. So that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.